そうめぐらいるとまんまやんでもらねえかわないチェックそうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどうめぐらいどああ、全然できんの。だ、はるぜ。はいね。Now, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Huh? We can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Or I'll make them. Under my mic. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Then. Ah, on that. Ah, in. What's the next thing? Oh, that. Oh, good luck. You can turn off your uh, what do you call mic? Eh? I open my okay. On that, then let us begin. Last time uh, we started talking on uh, right. Understanding. So now, when we, you were there when I talk on right understanding. No. None of you were there. No. Oh, okay. Now. No. Uh, right understanding, I said a uh, lot of things. Uh, it's very strange that you did not understand it, you did not participate in it. Uh, today I was uh, scheduled to talk on right thinking. We talk on the Noble Eightfold Path. You know the Noble Eightfold Path? Any of you? No? Okay. Noble Eightfold Path is right understanding, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Okay, now, can you tell me now what are the eight noble eightfold path? Number one, now, right? Understanding. Understanding. Second. What is the second? Right speech. No, right thought. And the third? Right speech. You write down, you have... Uh, Pen and paper, you write down. Who is uh, uh, Lassen Key? 
who is Lasenki. Tusar. Okay. Tusar is there. I will go with it. Vidat is there. Vidat? Yes. Can you hear? Huh? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me now. Now, uh, can you tell me what the noble eightfold path is? Eightfold path. What are the eight? Um. Yeah. So the uh, first one is I think right understanding. Uh huh. Um. Right thought. Yeah. Um. Right speech. Yeah. Right uh, effort. Action. Right action. Um. Right uh, livelihood. Uh huh. Um. Right effort. Uh huh. Uh. Right mindfulness. Mm hmm. And right concentration. Right concentration. Okay. All those other children who were not present last time can write them down. I think you have already written them. Last time I spoke on right understanding. What did I say last time? I said there are ten unwholesome things, ten wholesome things. Unwholesome is uh, harmful, uh, harmful things. Wholesome is not harmful, good. Now, uh, what are the unwholesome things? We said there are ten unwholesome things. What are the ten unwholesome things? By we every day we do three things. I mentioned three things. What are the three things? We think, we speak, and we do things physically. These are the three things we do every day. What are the three things? We think speak and do things physically. And there are uh, three things we uh, we uh, do f three physical things. Let, let me begin with the physical because it is very obvious Everybody can see physical things with hands and with hands and body. What are the three physical things? Sometimes bad things, bad things. Three physically bad things people do. What are they? Killing is one. Then stealing, taking things that are not given to us, and abusing our senses. I explained these things last time, but since all of you were not there, let me repeat it. Repetition is a very good way to remember. Let me repeat it. Uh, killing is unwholesome or bad. Killing of any living being. Why is it bad? Because they, we deprive them of their right to live. We have no ethical reason to take someone's life, human or animal. 
if we do that that is wrong or unwholesome that is why when we take the precepts what is the first precept what is the first precept yes to harm and uh, wounding. Adin aparnati pata. Parnati pata veramani sikkapadam samadhyami. That is the first precept. That means we want to abstain from killing. As I said, their killing is not good. It is very, very bad. We all like to live. Animals also like to live. We human like to live, animals like to live. And therefore we do things against their will. That is killing, that is bad. Then next unwholesome bad thing, unwholesome thing or bad thing is stealing. Taking something that is not given to us. That, is, that doesn't belong to us. It belongs to somebody else. That is called stealing. We say in, when we take the precept, what do you say in, in Pali? Adinnadana. Adinnadana veramani sikkapadam samadhyami. So we, we take in something belong to anybody. There are people who uh, take things that do not belong to them. Uh, even if you take a pen or pencil from the school or from somebody, that is stealing anything. You know, sometimes it is people steal others' ideas other people's ideas they steal and present as their own ideas. That is called plagiarism, plagiarize. That is when somebody print and publish a book or article, somebody else will use those articles or ideas without recog rec giving recognition, without acknowledging, without telling that we borrowed it or cited it from somebody so and so's writing. That also is stealing. <clears throat> so there are various types of stealing. That is bad, unwholesome. And then the third is abusing our senses. In Pali we call Kamesu Michachara. Abusing our senses. How we abuse our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, we abuse. How do we abuse? We abuse our eyes by staring at others with anger or uh, keep uh, using uh, computer, television all day long until we get eye ache or until we lose our eyesight. Uh, that is how we abuse. So we have to use them uh, properly, only for uh, our uh, existing purpose. Then we abuse our ear by listening to various bad things and uh, very bad uh, sounds uh, which can hurt our ears and uh, then we abuse our nose. How we abuse our nose? 
Sometimes people, or especially young people, they take uh, magic markers and uh, sniff that to get high. That is the way they abuse their nose. They sometimes go to hardware stores and open the paint thinners and sniff that to get high. And sometimes they use very strong, offensive perfume. That's how they abuse their nose. So there are various ways of abusing. And we abuse our tongue. I think that is a very common thing. We abuse our tongue by eating junky food to make us unhealthy, make us sick. We <coughs> drink unhealthy things like alcohol or we smoke. This is also unhealthy. So we, there are various ways of abusing our tongue. That is unhealthy, unwholesome. And these three are done physically. Therefore, they are physical, unwholesome, karma. You know the word karma? You have heard the word karma. These are unwholesome karmas. What is karma? Karma, yes? Is it the cause and effect of your actions? Uh, that is partially true. Partially true. Why I call it partially true? You miss one component in that definition, that explanation. A law of action and reaction is physical, like Newtonian physics. But we come, there has to be something more than that. What is that missing link? That is our thought, intention. Therefore, the come, I will talk, give a talk later on on that topic. That's a very, very big topic. So, we are talking about uh, unwholesome commas. We must understand unwholesome commas. The three I mentioned are called unwholesome. Why something is called unwholesome? Because they are dangerous. They produce unwholesome, painful results. Painful results. Therefore, they are called unwholesome. I will explain, I will give more details later on. Now I want to give the list. List of unwholesome, ten unwholesome commas. Now, physically we do these three things. Killing, stealing, and abusing our senses. We abuse our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and the body. When we abuse our body, it is called sexual misconduct. Sexual misconduct. So sexual misconduct is violating somebody's right. Men raping others, women, children, and people, uh, men and girls who are protected by their parents, protected by their relatives, protected by their friends, and they themselves uh, want to observe their own uh, modesty, and somebody violate that is called sexual misconduct. And others, oh, sexual misconduct belong to abusing our sensual pleasure. Seeing, hearing, smelling, t t touching, uh, they give us pleasure. But if we don't understand the danger, we abuse them. 
if you don't understand the danger, we abuse them. Danger in this life, danger in the next life, danger with the uh, law of the country, uh, criminal law, and so forth. And therefore, they are harmful. Then there are four verbal bad karmas, verbal unwholesome karmas. What are they? Telling lies. Telling lies. When we take the precept, five precept, fourth precept is called eh? Musavada. Musavada, Veramani, Sikkapadam, Samadhyami. I undertake the principle to abstain from telling lies. There are three more, three more unwholesome verbal action, unwholesome verbal. What are they? You do you know? Is it the use of harsh words? Yes. Bad words. Yes. Slander, uh, harsh words, slander, and uh, being rude to others. Yes. Harsh word. Uh, and then gossip and uh, and uh, slandering slandering is uh, breaking friendship breaking friendship between two people by uh, by backbiting by telling tales uh, they breaking friendship these four are bad, unwholesome verbal karma. Verbal karma. Now, the, there are three more unwholesome mental karma. Now, what are the unwholesome mental karma? Gr uh, covetousness. Covetousness is the greed of others' property, in addition to the regular greed, sometimes people can have greed for others, jealousy for others' property. That is called coveting, coveting. We, when you see somebody's expensive car, you wish, let me have this. I wish I have this. So you wish for somebody else's property to own by yourself. That is called covetousness. It is sometimes called unrighteous greed. There is no righteous greed, but this is unethical greed. That is unwholesome. Then, uh, the second is uh, hatred, anger, resentment, grudge. That is the second unwholesome mental karma. Third unwholesome mental karma is wrong views. We call micha ditti, wrong views. What are the wrong views? Thinking that there is no results of giving, no results of sacrificing. There are mothers, no fathers, uh, not this next world, and uh, there is no uh, holy ones, noble ones, who have uh, attained higher state of liberation, and so forth. Thinking these things are wrong views, and people might they think it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, we just uh, uh, 
they think that this is only one and only life. After that, we don't know what will happen. So we do whatever we want. Eat, drink, be happy and enjoy. Don't worry about the future. That's a wrong view. In order, if somebody were to say that there is no any life after death, that person must have perfect, complete knowledge of everything in the universe. You never find anybody who knows everything in the universe. Everybody knows a little bit and they, they, the, what they don't know, what they know is handful. What they don't know is worldful. One who knows only handful cannot make a sweeping statement saying that there is no life after this. That's a wrong view. And these are the three wrong uh, mental actions. What are the three wrong unwholesome mental actions? covetousness, hatred, and wrong views. Now, let me recap all the tense for you to make your note, notes clear. There are ten unwholesome actions. Uh, killing, stealing, sensual misconduct are physical Three unwholesome actions. Telling lies, slanderous talk, harsh speech, and gossip. Four verbal unwholesome actions. Covetousness, greed, uh, ha uh, covetousness, hatred, and wrong view are three unwholesome mental actions. Now, there are roots for these three, uh, the ten unknown semester. Roots, cause. What are the roots? All are g based on greed, hatred, and delusion. These are the three roots. You write down the unknown some roots are greed. Hatred and delusion. We call in Pali Loba, Dosa, Moha. Loba, Dosa, Moha. Now, the opposite of this is called wholesome ten, wholesome commas. What are the ten? Wholesome mental, wholesome commas. They also are verbal, the physical, verbal, and mental. Physical, three wholesome commas is abstaining from killing. It's a wholesome. It's a good karma. Abstaining from killing. And then when we abstain from killing, what do we do? We respect lives and practice metta, practice loving friendliness, practicing loving friendliness. That is a good karma, wholesome karma. That is wholesome because it generates peace and happiness. All our mental distress will fade away when we practice metta. That means friendliness. When we are friendly with all living beings, we always are very, very happy. We feel that we are secure and safe. Why? Because everybody is our friend. To stay among friends, you feel secure. You feel protected. You feel safe. You, do, you know that nobody would abuse you, attack you, and uh, harm you. Why? You are 
amidst of your friends. So when you kill, you always have fear. Always have fear. Why? Because someone may kill you, someone may hurt you, someone thinks that you are bad, someone may try to hurt you because you are bad. When you are friendly with all beings, they will be friendly with you. And then you feel very secure and happy. In order to get friend, friend, friends, we have to be friendly. We have to be friendly. In, in order to increase our uh, number of friends, we have to be friendly. That is one wholesome karma, you know. Ha bu building up good friendship is a wholesome karma. Because you don't try to hurt anybody, don't try to kill anybody, and therefore uh, you are committing always wholesome karma. Cultivating friendship, we call in Pali, metta, metta, cultivating metta. Second wholesome karma is not stealing. Rather than stealing, we try to protect others' property. We respect others' property. We respect others' wealth. We appreciate if somebody has very expensive something, house or car or whatever, we appreciate it. We are, we, we, that's called appreciative joy. We rejoice. We think, oh, that's very good so and so has wonderful thing, good thing. Let him have it. He is very good person. He might have done very good karma in the past. Therefore, he has good things. Don't feel jealous. We rather feel very happy and joyful. That's called appreciative joy. Instead of taking things from them, we appreciate what they have. That's a good karma, wholesome karma. Then the third of physical action, physical wholesome action, is abstaining from abusing our senses. We don't abuse our senses. We use our eyes to read something very meaningful, like studying our subject properly. We look at people in a very friendly way, which is instead of staring at them, uh, we uh, don't uh, spend too much, too long time in uh, uh, watching uh, computer games and uh, TVs and so forth until our eyes get sick and hurt. We just use them. Moderately we use them. And that way we don't abuse our eyes. Not abusing our eyes is a wholesome thing. Why wholesome? It, it improves our health, improves our mental state, and using only for developing our mental state. Then <coughs> uh, our ears, we listen to good things. We listen to Dhamma, we listen to our uh, parents and friends' advisors, uh, listen to our teachers, and listen to something that will benefit us. Useful. For instance, now you are listening to my talk. There's a good karma, wholesome karma. That is the karma called listening to Dhamma. Listening to Dhamma is a wholesome, it is also called a blessing, in Mangala Sutta, you study Mangala Sutta, Kalena Dhamma Savanam, Etam Mangala Muttapam. Dhamma Savanam means listening to Dhamma, listening to Dhamma. So we use our ears to listen to Dhamma, listening to very uh, good music, also not bad, uh, listening to our parents' advice, 
T-shirts, androids, and so forth, he, using. Then smelling. We smell, uh, even if we smell uh, uh, perfume, uh, without getting uh, addicted to it, that's not bad. So we are not abusing. Not abusing our nose also is a good thing. Not abusing our tongue, eating moderately, not eating uh, junky food, he unhealthy food, poisonous food. We eat very carefully, mindfully, only to survive us. We, the purpose of eating is to live, because all living beings depend on food. We talk about those things in detail later on, and therefore we use it only for living. And then we do not abuse our body. We abstain from uh, offending, doing offensive things to others. Uh, we respect others' modesty, others' principles, others' life without violating their privacy, their honor, their dignity, we respect them. That's a wholesome thing. These are the wholesome physical actions. What are the wholesome physical actions? Not killing, not stealing, not abusing our senses. Okay? Then, uh, Four verbal wholesome actions. What are the four verbal wholesome actions? Number one is telling the truth. Telling the truth. We, there is no any uh, sort of white lie. Lie is a lie. We always tell the truth. At home, in school, with friends, and therefore they will respect us. They say this person is honest, sincere, he always tell the truth. When we tell the truth, we are respected by others, and uh, others will trust us, society will accept us, and uh, even, you know, many people lose their jobs because they tell lies. Uh, when we always maintain the principle of telling the truth, that is a wholesome verbal action. Second verbal action is not slandering. We never uh, tell somebody's uh, weakness to his friend. Suppose there are two friends they, due to some little misunderstanding, they may have uh, little disappointment. Uh, they are, they are not, still friends, but not very intimate friends. Occasionally, one of them would tell you uh, that, suppose there are two friends, one is A, one is B. You are C. You go to A. A has some misunderstanding with B. A tells you, Mr. C, or oh, my dear friend C, I thought B was my good friend, but he has done such and such a thing without telling me uh, to hurt me. I am really upset, and so forth. So you go to Mr. B, and you add more to it and exaggerate it, and with some malicious intention, you tell B what A said is uh, you you distort it, uh, you add more salt, so to say and poison the mind of B. So, then, 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 the, then B might think 
that A was his good friend, although there was a little misunderstanding. Now A is not good friend, he's a bad friend. So you break their friendship by uh, slandering. And that is a bad thing. So uh, the, uh, the one who does not uh, tell uh, uh, malicious sp speech, uh, malicious talk, that person will bring these two uh, friends who are misunderstanding, bring them together. They say, when you go to A, you say that B was very, very uh, friendly with you, he loves you very much, he never says anything against you. So you build up and en enhances B's relationship with A. And you go to uh, A and you sell the same thing. If there is any misunderstanding, you try to patch it and bring them together, coordinate, uh, co make them uh, cooperative, friendly, and unite the divided. That is a wholesome verbal action, wholesome karma. Then the third wholesome karma is not using dirty words, cursing words, filthy word, unpleasant words. We always talk politely, gently, kindly, uh, so that people who listen to you will like to hear you. When you say uh, harsh things, people don't like to hear you. And therefore, when we speak very gently, kindly, with uh, uh, friendly feelings, with metta, in order to promote uh, peace and happiness among people, not hypocritically, you, you tell the truth and you say it in a very nice, polite, gentle way so that nobody will be upset. So you promote their peace, happiness. Uh, that, that is your wholesome third speech. Third one is uh, gossip. Uh, gossip uh, is, uh, is most common verbal uh, misconduct. When, we, when people gossip, they don't gain anything. Rather, they sometimes, if they slip their tongue during gossip, if they slip their tongue, they may say wrong things. And sometimes somebody looking forward to slightest mistake you make, they can exaggerate it. They can use it against you and uh, make your, uh, bring bad name to you. And gossip also has, does, has no any uh, meaningful uh, purpose. It's just wasting time. You can use that time for something useful, meaningful, uh, wholesome thing. These are the four verbal wholesome Come, verbal wholesome come. What are they? Not telling lies, not slandering, not harsh speaking harshly, or not uh, gossiping. Rather, speaking the truth, speaking in a friendly way to bring the divided together and speaking very softly, gently, kindly, and speaking meaningful. These are the four wholesome verbal karma. Then there are three wholesome mental karmas. What are the three wholesome mental karmas? 
thought of generosity, not covetousness. Not covetousness. You don't covet others' property. You just have a generous, very generous thought, thought of generosity. Letting go. We can talk about these things in the next uh, step. Uh, that is called right, uh, right thought. I will talk about that later. But in uh, mental karma, one mental karma is having right, good, friendly, meaningful thought of letting go. A good, uh, non covetousness. Second mental thought is not hating. Friendly feeling, friendly thought, loving thought, thought of metta. That is a second wholesome thought. That also is a karma. When we have, even if we don't say anything, but we cultivate metta, friendly thought in our mind. Every time we cultivate friendly thought in our mind, metta thought in our mind, we generate wholesome karma. Then the third wholesome thought is right view, not the wrong view, right view, understanding things correctly. And that is, although it is mentioned at the end of these ten wholesome karmas, understanding is actually number one. The most important thing, although it is put at the lee at the end, it is the most important wholesome karma. These are wholesome mental uh, wholesome karmas. What are they? Abstaining from telling, abstaining from killing, but practicing uh, loving, friendly feelings towards all living beings supporting, respecting lives, not uh, the three uh, physical karmas, not killing, not stealing, not uh, sensual misconduct, and practicing the opposite. The fourth wholesome verbal karma is not telling lies, not slandering, not high speech, not uh, gossip. Then the three mental wholesome come non covetousness means generosity, loving friendliness, and right view. Now, what are the roots of wholesome commas? Roots of wholesome commas. Roots are thought of generosity, that is, lobe. Aloba, not having non greed, no greed, thought of letting go, and thought of friendliness, avyapada in Pali, avyapada, then thought of uh, aloba, adosa, adosa, amoha, amoha means uh, non confusion, clarity in mind. These are the three wholesome roots of wholesome commerce. Aloba, Adosa, Amoha. Not greedy or generous, generous thought, friendly thought, and uh, clear thought. These are wholesome roots of wholesome commerce. Now, Understanding these two series of wholesome and unwholesome and their roots is right understanding. Children, there are many other things that we have to understand correctly. One is extremes. 
going to one extreme, we have to understand the danger of the both extremes. And that is understanding. There are many, many aspects of understanding, but uh, at this level, at the beginning, you remember this understanding of these ten unwholesome karmas and ten wholesome karmas, the root of ten unwholesome karmas and roots of wholesome karmas. Now, before I start the next talk, next talk actually going to Today I was going to give the second talk on the right thought, right thinking. But since there are some who were not uh, at the last, last talk, I wanted to repeat what I said last time. Uh, Vidat and his uh, sister uh, were at the last uh, meeting and therefore they may remember and others who are not there try to remember these things next time look at your notes remember them next time when i ask you please without any hesitation tell me you should be able to tell me i think this may be enough for today's talk i think it's a too long talk for you you people but uh, i think it is very easy to understand okay have a very, very good day. Okay? Thank you, Bante. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, yeah. Thank you.